Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. God is so good in our life. Amen. God is so good. We pray the Lord will bless us and will bless us through his word. As we sing and worship wherever you are, in your houses, in your living room, even those who are in the church, we welcome you in the presence of the Lord. And we welcome Jesus. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We welcome the Father in our midst. Amen. Are you ready to praise him? Say amen and amen. amen. We want to sing about the goodness of God today. Lord, you are good. Amen. Clap your hands wherever you are. Come on, sing. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Your mercy endureth forever. Ever in people, every nation and time, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. Who you are.
Love has called my name. Come on, everybody sing. This is your song.
goodness of God, your faithfulness, Lord. Yes, all our life, we sing about your goodness. We experience about the goodness of God in our life. Thank you, Lord. Your goodness is everlasting. Thank you for the goodness of God. We worship you. We bless you. Continue to be with us wherever we are, whether here in, in the church or Lord, those who are in the homes, we pray that you will touch them and be with them. Lord, just cover us and blanket us with the presence of God. With that assuring presence, your love assuring us, your comfort. Lord, just fill our hearts and overwhelm us. We thank you so much. We commit our time to you in the rest of the worship service this morning. We pray that miracle will happen in every home, in every life. Those who will hear the word today, we pray for miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We will sing the goodness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. How are we doing, church, this morning? Good, good. Hallelujah. We just want to thank you for your prayers for Pastor Carlo and also Brother Kelvin. They are back in Ipo. We thank you so much for upholding them in your prayers. Hallelujah. Now, this morning... Let us continue our worship with our giving. Giving is a part of our worship, and we could never leave that out of our worship life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us ready our hearts and our offerings, our tithes, yeah, to give back unto the Lord. This morning, I would like to ask Brother Kelvin to pray for the offering. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness over our lives, O oh dear Father. Father, we have, whatever that we have, O oh God, comes from you, O oh dear Father. This morning, Lord, we want to give back a small portion of what you have blessed us, O oh God, in terms of tax and offering, Lord. May you bless the hands that give, O oh dear Father. Multiply them, O oh God, for the furtherance and extension of your kingdom, O oh God. In Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Cha. Give with a joyful heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. And those of us who give online, yeah, our bank account is on the screen right now. It is also on our flyers and also in the description of this live video. So do take your time, yeah. Do take your time to give unto the Lord this morning. Continue to support the church, yeah. Hallelujah. The works of God continue to uphold the church also in your hands, uh, in your prayers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, uh, some announcements as we give this morning. Our Bible, uh, our Friday prayer meeting and also Bible study is back. Yeah, it is true uh, Zoom meeting. So if you'd like to join us, do approach us. Pastor Carlo also will post it on Facebook. So you can get the links there or you can direct um, messages so we can give you the link. Yeah, you can join us for the prayer, prayer meeting and also Bible study. And also on Sunday... Our English service at 11 and Bahasa at 7.45, yeah? Do share, do share our live services to your friends and family so that they also will be blessed by the Word of God, yeah? And uh, if you are blessed by the Word of God this morning or a statement or directly from the sermon, you can comment down below, yeah? You can also share this. And those of us who are not able to join live stream, don't worry. We will uh, upload it on YouTube and you can watch it rebroadcast so you can catch up with the sermons, yeah? 
Are we ready for the word of God this morning, church? Amen. Uncle Chia is very excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us welcome Pastor Carlo this morning. Let us give him a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome back to Ipo. <laughs> uh, we have a good time. Ten days in Sabah. Yeah. Praise God. Welcome, uh, Auntie Anne and Auntie Gladys, right? Yeah, good. Praise God. Good to see you all. And good to see you here, those in the church. Uh, we are still uh, March. I think next month we will uh, be more lenient and uh, there will be no more uh, social distancing in the church. So I hope that uh, more people can come and some of the members who have not come yet, uh, we pray that they will be here. Uh, some are very comfortable, those in Ipoya are very comfortable with the uh, uh, Zoom meeting or live stream. So they love to stay in their homes and worship the Lord with us. But we encourage you, if you are in Ipo, you come to church and worship with us physically. Say amen. Yeah, worship with us here physically. But those who are not in Ipo, of course, you join us through live Facebook. Uh, we broadcast it live uh, Facebook, right? So you join us uh, to worship the Lord and to receive the word of the Lord, right? Because the word is very important. To worship the Lord is the uh, priority of our life and the number one to worship God, whether in Zoom meeting or online or physical, all right? Because we are we're doing this... Um, to worship God because God is real. We have a God who is watching over us. We have a God who work in our life, who sustain us. Right? It's not only a belief in our mind or in our heart. Oh, I believe in God, you know. Uh, everybody believes in God. I also believe in God. So I worship God in the house or, you know, once in a while I turn to him. No, but but it, it's more than that. It is a lifestyle. It is your life. Worshiping God is your life, all right? And coming Sunday is just part of it, but very important because we fellowship, we gather together, we receive the word. Sometimes you know, on Sundays, the word that being delivered, the word that being preached is a personal word. God will speak to you individually, wherever you are, your journey with God, your heart, you know, maybe on Sunday, what God brings to you, you listen to the same pastor, the same preaching, the same time, the same place. But maybe the word that comes to you is different from what comes to me. All right? What comes to Brother Chia is different from what comes to Stephen. God will take that word and, and speak to you. And every Sunday we have a personal word from God, from the preaching of the word. So it's very important. It talks about your heart, your devotion to God. God, you know, we, we don't live our Christian life as touch and go. All right? Touch and go. Uh, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a connection with God. So that's why we worship God on Sunday. You know, we have a good facilities here. We have a very comfortable church. Some places we went to Sabah, not very comfortable. You know, we went to the kampung. <laughs> the first thing we go and check is the toilet, you know. And the moment I go to the toilet, I said, oh, oh, this will be a great challenge, right? I, it's not a, a bad toilet. It's good. But, you know, for us in the city, we are so used to sitting uh, toilet, not the squatting one, right? It's squatting like it's very, very challenging, you know? You need to do spiritual warfare about that. But uh, the sitting one is more comfortable. You can have almost like you can have your meditation in the toilet, <laughs> But uh, so I told Brother Chia, I said, we need to go and check the toilet. And he said, oh, oh. Then I, I told another friend, he said, wow, that is challenging, you know. So we talk about that. Uh, but we didn't know that they told this, uh, told this to the organizers, those who are there. And one of the ladies who, who served us in the kitchen, she, she was moved and she, what do you call that? She arranged for us. The rest house, there is a rest house about, I think, 10, 15 minutes away from the village. So, a rest house, a government rest house, you know. But it's not that very nice, you know. Like if you, uh, what do you call that, smash the uh, 
the bed, all the dust will <laughs> fly around. But at least the toilet is comfortable. It's a sitting toilet, right? Uh, air conditioned. So we had a good rest that night. So the, the lady was moved. You know, with, we had, not only she, she arranged the rest house, but she paid for it. You know, so we are, we are thankful. God knows your need that you cannot tahan squatting, so he sent you to the rest house <laughs> or the sitting toilet. But, but we have a good time. Uh, very hospitable people. They feed us so well. Right? You see, but, but our devotion to God is very important, right? So we, you need to uh, be thankful and praise God because God is so good in your life. And, uh, you know, we are here, we are, we are so comfortable, right? Uh, we have a nice church. We have good facilities here uh, compared to some places. But um, it's your heart. It's your heart. You know, uh, if you think about uh, Ukraine now really destroyed, most of the places are in ruins. Um, I, I, I will not talk about the political and uh, whatever the Russians do and all that, but... Um, I want to remember the Christians there, right? There's so many Christians in Ukraine. You know, their churches are destroyed. Some pastors stayed back. They did not run out of the country. But they sent, some of them sent their families to, to the borders to escape. But the pastor said, we need to return to the city because we want to help our country, help our nation. Uh, despite whatever reasons there, why Russia attacked them and all of that. But... Uh, we are not talking about that, but the believers there. You know, and, and yet we are here sitting comfortably here. You are there in your houses. You are sitting comfortably there. Some people in, in Ukraine, they are on the run. They are hiding because of the missiles and, you know, the, the, the bullets flying around. All right? Some of them are inside the... Um, there's one Filipina, two of them actually, married to Ukrainian. Um, when the Russian attacked the city, and they went down to the basement, and uh, when the missiles landed on those buildings, they were still under that building. I do not know whether they managed to come out, but they were inside that basement, and nobody knows what happened to them, right? So be thankful to God and pray for them. Remember them in your prayer. But what I want to share this before I go to the word, you know, you need to be thankful. If you are still healthy, you still can walk, you still can take a bus, you still can drive, come to church on Sunday. Amen. And worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. This morning before we came here, uh, my friend asked me to preach in their Bahasa service in uh, Simpang Pulai. Um, only one family came. Only one family came. But we still worship with my children and we still preach the word. And after the service, uh, the pastor wife said, wow. Because they also broadcast to uh, online. So he said, wow, today so many people join." In the online, so many people join in the online. All right? You know, the reason why, because uh, they, they work in a factory and the company does not allow them to go out. They are, they are being locked down inside, so they cannot come to church. But they log in and they attend the church online. So many of them. All you know, right? So I don't know, of course, because I preach today, so they have guest speakers, so they, they go online and log in. But they are hungry. Right? So we, are still, we still can come to church. If you are healthy, don't take things for granted. Yeah? All right. Sunday is a worship day. We come to church. Or wherever your church is, you come to church. All right? We are coming to the endemic period. And I always say that let it not only be an endemic period, but let that word itself become a prophetic word to us that it will really come to an end. Amen? We believe God that it will really come to an end, that this pandemic, this virus and all, will really come to an end. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
In the book of, book of Malachi, God said, I am the Lord and I do not change. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last. Only God is eternal. Whatever things on earth, nothing is eternal. It will cease and it will end. Because only God lives forever and ever. COVID-19 will not live forever. COVID-19 will cease. The, this virus, whatever variant is there, uh, it will end. We, we just don't know how long or when. But we are believing God is doing something. God is cleansing the world from this plague. He is cleansing the world. And I believe it will end very soon. And if we come to the endemic, I believe that will sort of like a prophetic thing that will happen, that this pandemic will end and it will cease. But your heart needs to be with God and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a great time uh, in Saba, and I do not want to share it alone. A brother here will share. Don't think I forget about you, brother. <laughs> Right, you always want to escape. No escape today. So come and share what you experience. Uh, you, if you don't experience anything, that just tell them the fruit first time you eat. How, how is the taste of that fruit? Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, um, it's good to be back after two Sundays away from church. But uh, we are so blessed that we are in Sabah. And uh, we've been traveling all the way for almost 10 days, right? From one place to another. So we are, not only we are blessed, but uh, in fact, uh, all the churches and the members are also are so blessed, you see. When we were in uh, Nabawan, you see, uh, in fact, the, the presence of God was so strong and the glory of God just fell, just flowed. And then even when we're about to end, we end the meeting, but they... They still do not want to go back. They still want to stay back, you know, just to, 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 to be in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And then the next morning, there's a sisters. There's a one sister, in fact, uh, she wants to give up her ministry, right? But uh, after the revival meeting that night by Pastor Carlo, she changed her mind. And he told the, the, the pastors or the, uh, the, 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 the people there that she wanted to stay back and continue his, her ministry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But that's a, a, a good experience, you see. And also, uh, we managed to go to our outreach in uh, Kota Marudu. We spent two nights there with the, the, the families and all the children. I'm so touched because you can see that the small little kids, you know, they were worshipping and they were, you know, it's so different from our place, you see. They're so hungry for the word of God and uh, they are so... Uh, cheerful and they worship the Lord together when we are doing the worshiping. It's so different from here. I'm also touched also. And, and also when we are back to Kalingao, is it? And uh, there's one church where there are a lot of youth. Uh, the first thing I step into the church, I feel the, the presence of God just flow, you know, to, to me to tell the children, the youth, they were, they were serving the Lord, you know, happily and they were very vibrant. I, I would say that they are the future leaders, you see, if they continue to, to serve the Lord and read the Word of God. I was so touched with them and uh, praised the Lord, you know. Um, and also, as Pastor said, we, I've tested one of the uh, Saba fruits, they call it tarap, which is the first time. It was so delicious. <laughs> Each of us eat one of it, like a chumpada, but actually it's not a chumpada, yeah. All right, we praise the God that we are back home and... Uh, I'm looking forward to the, another trip because this is my third trip. Actually, we went to Philippines twice and then Sabah is the first uh, mission trip. But I'm looking forward to more of it. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, without any further ado, I just want to pass the time to Pastor Carlo to share the word this morning. Yeah, praise God. Uh, thank you for Brother Chia. I told my wife he really took care of his pastor, <laughs> following me, right, making coffee, uh, you know, Maggie, he go and tap out food, right, iron my clothes also, wow, I said, uh, the Lord bless him, uh, bless him so much, praise God. 
So today I want to continue what I left. Uh, we open our Bible to Ephesians chapter 6 again. Um, now we go to verse 12. Ephesians 6 uh, verse 12. We are still um, here talking about the, <clears throat> what do you call, winning in the Christian battle or Christian struggle. Uh, because that is what we are experiencing. And uh, today, actually, we want to see or identify the enemy that we have. All right? But not to scare you, but I want to make you to rejoice when you know your enemy. Where are they? What is their position and what your position are? Uh, where you are in God? Because many Christians have a wrong misconception because of all the teaching that is going around in the books and the teachings that we hear, and they emphasize so much about the warfare, warfare, warfare. And uh, they're doing seminar about warfare, winning your warfare, how to gain victory in your warfare. But then when I study this and read the Bible, and um, I have a new understanding about this. Actually, we are not in warfare. We are not warring, actually. Because we are more in struggling in our Christian life, in our Christian walk. We struggle. Because Ephesians chapter 6, he used the word wrestle. We are wrestling. We are not fighting. We are not warring. Right? But yet still, we go around churches. I go around church, even in Samba, still people talk about, you know, fighting the devil, you know, binding the stronghold, you know, in the city. The stronghold in the city is very strong. That's why many people don't come to church. That's why many people cannot be saved because the stronghold is holding them, you know. We need to fight them. We need to destroy them. We, we still have this, you know, uh, understanding uh, because of the teaching that we have and the teaching that we receive. But um, I'm beginning to see and to have this understanding about our position. In fact, when you look at it, really, the Christian, we are not in the battlefield fighting and warring against these demons and Satan and all his forces. We are not in the battlefield. But actually, we are in a wrestling ring. We are in a ring. We are in the ring, you know, wrestling with the enemy. That is the picture of the Christian struggle, not the Christian fighting and the Christian warring. I always tell people, okay, many people bind the devil, bind Satan, bind uh, devils in all of this. And I, I, I ask them a question. How long have you been binding Satan? How long have you been binding demons? And you keep on doing that every time you pray. And you keep on doing that every month, every year. For how many years? Some a decades they've been binding the devil for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You know, 50 years they've been binding the devil. But why you keep on binding him? Uh, some, I don't know, some people jokingly said because he keep on losing himself. <laughs> you, know? you know? Do you think the police keep on you know, catching the thief because he keep on escaping from the cell? Right? But that is, even through logic, it's not really logical to think about it. You keep on binding devil. I bind you Satan, I bind you devil, I bind you demons, you know. Just because some verses that Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you lose in heaven shall be loose on earth. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you need to bind Satan. I, I, I mentioned this already earlier in my preaching or in this, in this teaching, in this series, that Jesus never bind Satan, bind demons. He never fight them even. Jesus never fought them. Jesus never, because if you are fighting, that is a picture of, uh, un, unachieved or uh, incomplete victory. You are fighting because you want to win. Correct? You fight because you want to win. You win your case. You want to win your battle. You want to win your struggle. That's why you fight. But Jesus is not, Jesus don't need to fight because Jesus is not in the position of trying to win against Satan because Jesus never lose 
And Jesus never in that level of contending with the devil so that he will win. Jesus always a winner. Jesus was always a victor. He is God. And there is no greater than God. Amen. There is no greater than God. There is no greater power than our God. So Jesus did not come to earth to fight with the devil. But Jesus came to it to earth to destroy and to redeem man. To destroy the works of the devil and to redeem man. So we need to have this proper understanding so that you will know where you are. What is your position? A lot of Christians today, before they go and preach in the, into that village, before they go missions, before they go into the city, they will do prayer meeting, spiritual warfare, spiritual mapping, spiritual strategizing, you know, to find out what stronghold there, what stronghold here, you know, what devil control that city and all, and they will attack and they will pray and all that. I don't see that in the Bible. I don't see that in the book of Acts. When the disciples, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, they just went. Jesus did not say you need to do spiritual mapping first. You need to do spiritual strategizing first. You need to do all this first. You need to bind this stronghold first. You need to bind that stronghold first. Because if you don't bind and you don't fight them and attack them until they are defeated, you fast and pray for many months. If that stronghold is not broken, when you preach the gospel, then people will not hear your gospel. Wow. But the disciple just went. When Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, the disciple just went. They went. The Bible says, Mark 16, he said, and they went everywhere. They went and preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. If you read the book of Acts, if you read about Paul the Apostles, he just goes city to city and preach the gospel. We, we do not understand what we have in our hands. The gospel itself, the Bible says the gospel is the power of God to everyone that believes. So when you go and preach the gospel, that is the power of God to everyone that believes. The only... Uh, thing is how you preach and how you deliver the gospel that people will be open up in their hearts be open up in the ears to hear and to receive the gospel because when they receive and believe the gospel then the power of God works hallelujah if you pray and pray bind the devil bind satan bind demons bind strongholds and all but if you don't go and tell people about Jesus nobody will get saved Hallelujah. But when you preach the gospel, then the light will come. The truth will come. Jesus said the truth will set them free. I think this is what we need to do. We just need to open our mouth and share to people. Invite them to church. Invite them to meetings. Invite them for Bible study, for prayer meeting. Bring them to Christian uh, fellowship. You know, bring these people. If not, tell them about Jesus. Share to them about God's goodness. If not, show them about God's goodness in your life. Then they will see and they will believe. Right? We have to understand that we are not in the position of fighting. Because the Bible says Jesus fought. He won the victory and he gave us the victory. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ that love us. We are more than conquerors. I don't have to fight to win or I don't have to fight to have a victory because I already have the victory through Christ Jesus. Jesus said don't need to fight. I give you the victory. Your enemy has been defeated. The devil has been defeated. I defeated. Jesus said I defeated him. I am the one that died on the cross. I am the one that went to the grave. I am the one that went into the, the, the world of the dead. You know, to, to take the keys of hell and death. And Jesus said, I have the, the keys of hell and death. I am the one who resurrected Jesus. Said, I am the one who ascended to the Father. I am the one who seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for you. I have won the victory for you. Your problem with the devil, I have settled it. I have paid the ransom. I have sacrificed. I have shed my blood. 
I, I, I gave my body, you know, to give you all this victory. That's why if you read 2 Peter chapter 1, he said, God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He has given us all things. How many? All things. How much? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. It means that is useful, that you need for life and godliness. Whatever you need, God has given it to you because of Christ Jesus. Why? Because Peter said, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1, he said, We receive like precious faith because of God's righteousness. We receive the same precious faith. We receive the same faith that is valuable, that is, you know, so rich, so powerful. Faith in Christ. And because of that faith in Christ, he said, God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Powerful. But sometimes people create this teaching and wrote these books and all to make it sound very interesting. This is what religion do. And this is what the spirit of religious, uh, the religious spirit will do. This is what the spirit of error will do. The spirit of error will make you to believe the twisted teaching from the Bible. Some other books. Today, there is another book written, actually from Taiwan. Talk about the throne room of God. Yeah, some people don't like when I say like this. Talk about the throne room of God. They teach you how to pray so that you can go direct to the throne room of God and claim your miracles, even talk to God and have an audience with God. Wow, sounds very powerful, sounds very spiritual, sounds very biblical, sounds very interesting. And the mystical Christian love this. Mystical Christian love this thing. Right? They teach you how to go to the throne room of God. Wow, somebody shared that to me with passion, with oh, wow, excitement. No? Wow. You know, if they teach you how to go to the throne room of God, why don't just go there? Don't come back. If you can go to the throne room of God and talk to God. Wow. But I don't see that in the Bible. Even Paul the apostle who went to the third heaven. Don't even teach you how to go to the throne room of God. Even John the apostle when he saw Jesus in Revelation. God said come up here. John did not even teach us how to go through to the throne room of God. You know some people they just create teaching. Um, and they said they are very powerful people. Let us be more practical. More practical. And they said they, you will have more power to fight against the devil. Well, I don't have to fight the devil. Not because I'm strong. Not because I am a special Christian. But because of what the Bible says. Jesus won the victory and he has given us the victory. But now you live in this earth. The devil is the defeated enemy. But the devil does not want to quit. He, the, Jesus destroyed him, all his power and all, until he gave you that authority that in the name of Jesus, you can cast out devils. You can rebuke, you can command. Right? That is what the, the Bible used. Even Jesus in his life, he rebuked devil, he commanded them to come out. He did not fight. And he told the disciples, you need to cast out devils, rebuke them and all, not fight. Because it talks about your position. We are always in the position of victory. We are not in the position of trying to fight to win a victory. We already have a victory. Come on, say amen. Don't you love that kind of Christian life? I love that kind of Christian life because it makes me to be free. It makes me to be free. It's really true what Jesus said. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And the devil does not like that. The devil does not want you to know the truth. So that's why he gives you all these interesting books and interesting teaching to bind you and to keep you under. You know, and the devil make you to believe you need to fight me. You need to fight me. Create more books to fight me. Create more books to do spiritual warfare. Create more books to do spiritual mapping. Create more books to receive revelation of God for here and there to undo, undo, undo all this. No, Jesus has done all of this thing. Do you think that the blood of Jesus is so cheap? 
that it cannot complete the mission that God has given him. The Bible said in Isaiah 53, he said, Jesus, the Messiah, satisfied God's anger. God's wrath. He is the one who satisfied it. He fulfilled God's requirement because of his blood, because of his death, because of the cross. Do you think the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ, do you think that when Jesus died on the cross, do you think that there is an incomplete things that Jesus did not finish? That we have to do it today to complete it. That we have to, you know, really work hard and try our best, you know, to complete the works of Christ. No. Jesus hung on the cross and he said, it is finished. But yet today Christian tried to finish the work of Christ. Hey, come on. When Jesus died and he rose from the dead. Before he was ascended to heaven, he told his disciple, go and preach the gospel to every creature. Those who believe, baptize them. Teaching them all that I have commanded you. So at least three things there. When Jesus ascended to heaven, he only gave us three instructions. Preach the gospel to all nations. Baptize them who believe and teach them all things that I have commanded you. At least three instructions. Yet today, people are behind it. They are doing things behind it before all this completion because they thought that Jesus, there are some left over that Jesus did not complete his mission that we need to complete it. No, that is not the gospel. That is wrong. Don't you think if Every believers, every members in the church do our job in these three instructions. Preach the gospel, baptize people, teach them all the commandments of God. To observe all the words that Jesus has commanded us. Don't you think that if we just do all this throughout the week, don't you think that we can reach more people? Every one of us, we have connection, we have in contact with people, go to the market, go to the supermarket, go to the mall, go to the schools, go to your workplaces, colleague, you know, just share. You don't even have to preach the whole day. You just fellowship with them and share to them your life and show them about the life that is in Christ Jesus. How free that life is, how blessed that life is, the breakthrough that you have, the abundance that God has given you. And people will see, wow, this is the life that I want. Don't you think that we can reach more people? Don't you think that more people will believe Jesus because of the life that we are living? Hallelujah. The ministry is not limited to pastors. Apostles today, they make it big, big names. Oh, apostles, so and so. So, oh, everybody need to listen to these apostles. Oh, pastors, so and so. You know, evangelists, so and so. So, everybody need to listen to the evangelists. You know, everybody just sit in the church and listen to conferences. No, every one of us, we serve in the kingdom of God. You can win somebody. You can win soul. You can pray for the sick. You can help people. You can be a blessing. Every one of us. Come on, say every one of us. Hey, hallelujah. I just want to encourage you here today. The time is short. The time is short. And we cannot afford to sit down in the church. The Pastor Joshua was sharing to, to us when he was in the ICU. Because of COVID-19. He was 26 days in the hospital. But there was an old man. Uh, the father of the nurse. That is attending to him. Was in the other bed. And Pastor Joshua was still. Having this hose. In his nose. You know lying down there. You know, and the nurse was attending to him. So he was just talking. And he saw that this nurse was talking to the father. Next to his bed. He said, oh, your father. Yeah, my father. And he was there, you know, still having the problem of breathing. Then the nurse told Pastor Joshua, they are not believers. He said, In actually, I am looking for a Christian to pray for my father. 
after Pastor Joshua heard that. So he felt convicted that he needed to do something. So he took time. He came out from his bed and talked to the man about 80 years old, I think. Huh? Oh, old man. He was talking. Was to pray for him. And he asked the old man, he said, do you want to receive Jesus? And the daughter was standing there watching the nurse. And the father said, yes, I want to receive Jesus. <laughs> so he prayed for the old man to receive Jesus and pray for him. And the daughter was very happy. And the man was very happy. You know, I think two or four days after that, the old man passed away. What happened if Pastor Joshua did not do all this? I think he died and go to hell. Right? In that just, you know, simple moment, opportunity that come, you just share. Just share. Just talk to people about Jesus. You don't have to preach to them the whole Bible. Just be good to them and be nice to them and just share your life. Just share your life. Some people regret because they did not obey God in just opening their mouth and like one of my friends, you know, he saw this girl uh, passing by and the Lord prompted in his heart, you know, talk to her. But he did not. He feel shy and all, you know. But then the next day, he read the newspaper. Paper, he saw the same girl commit suicide. Lost the opportunity. So he said, after that, I decided whatever prompting the Lord gave me, he said, I will do it. Whether to pray or to talk to person and all. So he talked to people even in the restaurant, you know, talk to them, pray for them in the restaurant. And he had some good experience. The Lord filled them, even in the, filled them in the Holy Spirit in the restaurant. Just be obedient. If we just focus in, you know, doing this thing, I, I, I'm not saying that prayer is wrong or spiritual warfare, you know, but it's a new understanding. I think Christians waste a lot of time praying than witnessing. If we witness, if we go out and we engage in witnessing, I think we have won so many. Or maybe we can turn the city upside down. Come on, say amen. Instead of praying, praying, you pray two hours. Now I don't even pray like that. In my prayer, I spend time reading the Bible. I read my Bible in my prayer. I don't pray so much. I don't ask God so much. I don't intercede so much. I read the Bible so much. In my prayer, that is my prayer time. Well, while reading the Bible, sometimes the Lord puts something in my heart, in my mind. So, of course, I pray, Lord, this, this, this. I remember, pray. But how many of you can sit down two hours with your Bible? How many of us can sit down two hours reading our Bible? Or just stay there with your Bible two hours? No. Oh, but they can pray one hour. They can intercede one hour. Some, they use their fingers. Five fingers. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes for my family. Ten minutes for uh, my colleague. Ten minutes for the city. Ten minutes for the nation. Ten minutes. Oh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Almost one hour, yeah? <laughs> right? Just because they want to bid with the time. But if you read your Bible in your prayer, I think you will grow so much. Wow. It's part of my experimentation in my spiritual journey. So I do this. Wow, when, when we went to Saba for two years, two years plus, I did not go or for some uh, outside ministry and traveling. But when we went, uh, the ministry everywhere, we, you can sense the presence is so strong. I, I myself am blessed because, you know, in, in my spiritual journey and reading the Bible like that, spending time in the presence of God, in the word of God like that, I felt the glory increases. You know, when preaching time, I feel the passion and the flow just flowing like that. With the word of God, wow, it's just amazing. I'm, I'm amazed myself, you know. And the, the, I feel the glory lingers after the service, after the preaching. The glory of God still lingers around. And 
you know, stay there. The strong presence of God. And that is what we want. We want God to use us. Ah, hallelujah. I, I don't even go to my notes. <laughs> but sometimes God wants to speak like that. Ephesians six twelve, he said, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You notice the word against, against, against. He did not just say Ephesians 6, 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood and principality, but principality, but powers. But he put the word against, 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 against. He repeat that. All right? Because he wants to emphasize this. He said, we do not wrestle. Very important. That's why I like King James Version because King James used a, at least, you know, almost a specific word, a direct word compared to other versions because other versions, they changed the King James word or the old English they called to more modern English to accommodate and to, you know, make us, they said to, Make a simple, to simplify it for us to understand. But the problem is, sometimes it loses the, the strength, the, loses the uh, directness of the word. All right? But he said here, for we do not wrestle. And very specific, the word wrestle, that is from the Greek word. The rest to wrestle means you are in a wrestling match, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's a close contact. Why? Wrestling is uh, between these two opponents that you you are looking for for ways how to topple the other one. So it involves trickery. How you trick this person to trip him to fall down, and that is what the devil do. The devil wants to wrestle with you, and he's looking for your weaknesses. How you stand. And in Ephesians, you can see the word stand, 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 withstand, stand, stand. Because your, your position, knowing your position is so important, you know, to stand solidly, to stand fixed, established, so that the enemy cannot find any weakness. You know, if you study martial arts, judo, or wrestling, uh, wrestling match, this is what they learn. They look for your weaknesses in the way you stand, in the way you hold, how so that, you know, they can find this and they can trick you and they can trip you, they can deceive you. This is what a wrestling match will do compared to battle or in the field fighting. No, that is not the picture here because fighting in the battle is different. You bring your bow, you bring your spear, you, 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 you know, you throw it, you release your bow, or today, you know, your guns, your rifle and all. But, but that is the difference. The devil does not come and shoot you like that. He comes and wrestles with you. And he wants to topple you. He wants to trip you down. And he wants to lock you and pin you to the ground so that you will not get up. Amen. That is the picture here. He said, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. And here we understand that our struggles, our wrestling is not with flesh and blood. It is an unseen force. The enemy is an unseen force. It's devils and demons. And Paul gave us here from verse 14, the hierarchies of these evil forces that is working. But here, verse 12, he said, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, I want to share this not to scare us. Wow, principalities. Whoa, power. Oh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, we don't have to make them big. They are nothing. Say they are nothing. 
They cannot work in you. That's why in the beginning of this teaching or this preaching in series, we are talking about the mind. We are talking about the flesh. We are talking about the world. These three major things, we need to settle it in our life. You must die to your flesh or you must crucify your flesh. You must renew your mind. Right? And you must die to the world. You must not love the world. Because if you are still alive and active in these three areas, then you cannot live a victorious life. You cannot defeat the enemy. The enemy can come and leech on you. They can bind you. They can blind you. They can deceive you. Amen. There's nothing great about deliverance ministry or spiritual warfare. Some people, they make it big as if that they are the only one who know how to do spiritual warfare. No. If you don't live in the world, if you don't love the world, if you crucify your flesh, put your flesh to death, and you renew your mind, you will live in freedom. You will live in victory. It's that simple. Amen. There is no secret, one, two, three, you know, you know, seven keys to freedom, you know. No, you just need to die to your flesh. Crucify the world from you. And also you need to renew your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Then you live in freedom. All these principalities, all these hierarchies of the enemy in this kingdom of the devil, all these ranks actually is nothing. If you submit yourself to Christ. But if you do not submit yourself to Christ. You live in the flesh. You live in the world. You love the world. You don't renew your mind. This thing can trip you. This thing can deceive you. These devils can even destroy you. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes. I'm not saying we are perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. We are learning. We are journeying together. We are growing. We, we, we have a responsibility to protect ourselves. Amen. Not because I am anointed. Not because I am anointed. I am strong and invincible. Some pastors try to project like that. Oh, I am an apostle. No demons can come and touch my life. I am a doctor of ministry. I am an evangelist. I, I am powerful. No, it's not like that. Everyone is the same. As long as you keep yourself, you protect yourself, you discipline yourself, then you will survive in your Christian life. In your Christian work. Why people want to give up in ministry? Because here, the mind needs to be renewed. The mind needs to be set on Christ, on the things of Christ. You need to be faithful to God. Faithful. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness is work. You need to work on your faithfulness. You need to be faithful to God. Faithfulness is not a gift that is imparted to you. And because I lay hands on you, you receive the spirit of faithfulness. Whatever happened to you, be faithful. No, it's not. Why husband and wife can live until 90 years old? Because they are faithful and they are working in their faithfulness to one another. Say amen. Amen. Why the husband does not look for another wife? Because he is faithful to his wife. And that faithfulness, he needs to work on his faithfulness. It's not easy to stay faithful. Because there are many Miss Universe or at least Miss Ipo coming around. Hello. A wife, she needs to work with her faithfulness to the husband. Then she will stay with the husband. Even how the husband behave. Even how the husband treat. But because of faithfulness, she will stay. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. But today, faithfulness has no value. Not even, we cannot even call it faithfulness. Because just with a little problem, people run away. Wife run away. Husband run away. Husband look for another woman. Wife, look for another man. So faithfulness has no value. But faithfulness is a very, very powerful thing. Hallelujah. It's not a gift. You have to work in it. 
Faithfulness to God is you make a decision to be faithful to God. Die to the world. Die to the flesh. And renew our mind. Then all these things is nothing. It's nothing. Right? So we don't have to see that, wow, principalities, war powers, or rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in high places, war, war, war. No. The good news is, I'm, I'm putting my title today that we are higher than our enemy because we are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head. And the Bible says that Jesus is high above all principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age. Jesus is much, much higher. He is highly exalted. Philippians chapter 2, if you read from 9 to 11, he said that God has highly exalted him. Why not we read that one before I forgot? Let's read uh, Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Praise God. I hope you are blessed with this word, not scared. Some people, when they hear my preaching, they get scared. Um, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9. He said, wherefore, God also has highly exalted him. Highly. That is a, a very interesting word. Not only exalted him, but highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Not only the name of Jesus is above means the first above everything, but his name is above every name means he is powerful. The name of Jesus Christ. Above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, including Satan. Including principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age. And spiritual wickedness in high places. Their knee should bow in Jesus name. <clears throat> and he said of things in heaven. Things in earth. Things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is curious. O Lord. He is Lord. To the glory of God. The Father. Isn't it powerful? That's the Bible. Uh, we don't have to twist it here and there. That is the Bible. And sometimes when you read books, that's why it's so important to read the Bible so that you know the scripture, you know the Bible, so that when you read other books, you read other teaching, straight away your mind will compare it to the Bible. Where is that in the Bible? That's why when people tell me, he said, oh, the throne room of God, you can learn to go to the throne of God and have a conference with God. Imagine that. Some prophets will declare themselves, Oh, the Lord took my spirit before his throne room and I have a conference with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit there. And four of us have a conference, talk about the end of the world, talk about the coming of Christ. Come on, people. Do you need that? Why do I, why, why I'm not interested? Because the Bible has revealed to me the Bible is the final authority. The Bible is the complete revelation of God. You don't need any other new revelation. Amen. When, when somebody come and prophesy to you, Oh Jesus, you know God revealed to me that Jesus is coming soon. Why I need to be impressed with that? The Bible has said so. Jesus has said so. He said, behold, I am coming quickly. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you and I will come again and take you with me so that where I am, there you will be, will be also. I don't have to be impressed when a prophet says like that. Come on, hallelujah. Some people, they just want to project themselves that they are very interesting people. Oh, the Lord took my spirit and I appear before God and God tell me about the end of the world. Hey, read the book of Revelation and you will see the end of the world. Read the book of Daniel and you will understand about the end time. Read, read Thessalonians. The Bible has revealed about the end times. Do you need a prophet today to tell you about the end time? Do you need a prophet today to tell you why Russia invade Ukraine? Some people try to spiritualize that. Some people try to tell you that is an end time war. Hey, come on. Read your Bible. Some people, 
You know, sometimes it's just, why, why I say like this? Because a lot of people, they are bound by this so-called good, good teaching. Yeah. And very interesting teaching. But it's not, the truth is a twisted truth. Twisted, man. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 20. Ephesians 1 20. He said, which he wrought in Christ. This is talking about, um, no, let, let's move uh, verse 16. Paul was praying for these believers in Ephesians. He said, cease not, I cease not to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who are to believe. We need that revelation. We need that understanding. The greatness of the power of God that is working in us according to the working of his mighty power. Which he wrought in Christ. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his, at his own right hand in the heavenly places. The same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead. God said, it's in you. Set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. God raised up Jesus, resurrected him, raised him up in the heavenly places. Listen to this verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body. You and I. The fullness of him that fills all in all. I, to me that is a very powerful revelation. That's why I said we are higher than our enemy. We are higher than the principalities in Ephesians 6.12. Than the powers. Than the rulers of the darkness of this age. And the spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. We are higher than all of this enemy. Come on say amen. Some Christians they do not know that. They're still fighting as if that they are down here and fighting and do spiritual warfare and going up to the high places and binding demons, tearing down principalities. But that is not a Bible teaching. Paul is just telling us that these powers, these enemies are working around us and working to topple us and to wrestle against us. But it doesn't mean that they are so mighty and powerful because Jesus has defeated them. And he has given the power to the church. He has given us this position in Christ as the head, as the body of Christ. Jesus is the head, far, far above all principalities and power. Our position is not here, down here, and looking at this principality and power. But our position is up there, looking down to these principalities and power. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 6. He said, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine that word? To me, I want to rejoice with this word because Jesus made me to sit. He raised us up together and made us sit together with Christ in the heavenly places. So you are in that position. Think about your position. You are not down here and try to fight and fight and fight and fight. You are up there. That's why you can command. You can rebuke. If there are demons come in your way, if there are problems, there are whatever demons there is uh, working in your family, you can tell them in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of my family. I rebuke you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, say amen. You know, that is our position. 
So this Ephesians 6.12, I want to end here. You know, I want to continue this next week. So many things to mention. So many things. That's why we have this uh, Young Leaders um, Academy here in Ipoh. When I saw the module talk about spiritual warfare. So I request from Pastor Chan. I said, can I teach that? Because it's still empty. The teacher empties. <laughs> so I said, can I teach that? He said, yeah, no problem. I said, so I'm looking forward for that next year, January, uh, my slot. So I hope that people will have this understanding. I'm not saying we don't have enemy. I'm not saying we are not being attacked by the enemy because he will come and wrestle with you to discourage you, to make you quit, to make you, you know, quit everything and give up, right? Sometimes make you to give up on your life and be in despair. Some people commit suicide and end their life. That is what the devil do. Jesus said the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And this is what we want to see. Don't be scared with all these names because you are higher than your enemy. According to Colossians 1, Ephesians 1, Philippians chapter 2, and many other scriptures in the Bible. Colossians 2, 15. You know, you talk about your position. You are not in the position of fighting to win a victory. You are in a position of victory. All the time when you submit yourself to Jesus Christ. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to end it here. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will equip your church with a, this understanding of your truth, of who we are in you. That we are higher than our enemy. Church, you are higher than your enemy. You will only come under when you live in the world, when you love the world, when you live in the flesh, when you do not renew your mind, you will live under the influence of the enemy. But if you submit yourself to Christ, church, you are above. The Bible says you have been raised up together and made to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is who you are. So instead of warring and fighting the enemy, please go and preach the gospel because the gospel is the power of God to everyone who believes. Go and share. Go in witness. Go and live for Jesus. Go and show good things and good deeds and good works. Help people in all. Let them see Jesus in your life. <clears throat> we thank you for the things that you have done. You died on the cross. Lord, the power that you have been released for us. The authority that you have given us, the blessing and all, we thank you so much. We just worship you. We just bless your name. We just praise you, Lord, for what you have done in our life. Praise you. Seal your word, I pray, as you equip your church, Lord, in Jesus' name. We will heed of your word that you said to us, go and preach the gospel. To every creature. Thank you Jesus. Bless your people throughout this week. Lord bless them. Empower them. I pray that you will lead them to places. Where they will encounter people. Where they will show Jesus or share Jesus to them. Lord and speak about you. And I pray that you anoint them. Empower them that when they speak. The anointing will flow. And salvation will come in every soul, in every life. Thank you so much for today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray for your members and your people, those who are sick, those who have problems, those who are struggling. Lord, in their life, bring healing, bring miracle. In Jesus' name, bring a breakthrough. Change their life, change their family, change their situation. Lord, the world, I pray that you deliver us from COVID-19. It will cease in the name of Jesus because we are going into this prophetic word, this endemic period. Let it end in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Amen and amen.